All right, guys, welcome to the fifth installment of, of Late, Late Night, Night TCG. TCG. So today we're going to be talking about the state, state of, of Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu -Oh. All right. So, oh, man. I'm excited. Uh, I am, too, because the ban list recently just dropped. If you didn't know, yeah, if you are living under a rock and have not seen the reaction videos, the ban list has dropped. And the ban list, everyone thought it was going to be uh, an unbanned list. And by all means, it was. But it was also very much so a ban list. Yeah, it was really, really exciting. Um, but before we get you know, started into the state of Yu-Gi-Oh!, I always want to let you guys know, please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. We love reading the comments in the Seriously, comment section yeah. and um, all the, I guess, advice, feedback, and just overall general like comments about um, how we're doing so far is great. Um, and we both stream on Twitch. If you guys haven't already uh, figured that out, um, I stream <laughs> at random times throughout the week. <laughs> and uh, Susie, when do you stream? So we stream at Head to Head Battles every Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7.30 p.m. EST. Tea, all right? right, right, right. And so, yeah, guys, um, the second part of this will be on Head to Heads Battles channel. You so heard. definitely go check them out in the description box below. And also, uh, you know, subscribe, like, and comment on their section as well. Um, it will support both of us greatly. So I expect to see you guys there. Um, and, yeah, we're going to jump right into it. And uh, as tradition, guys, we got to clink and then roll the intro. So roll the intro. We're back. All so, right. Block Dragon is gone, which means, which means, yep. Megalith and Ad Emancipators can't abuse it no more. Like, have gone from a tier one strategy yeah. to literally a tier 2.5. I can't even call it a tier two strategy anymore. Yeah, it's so weird calling Rock Rogue. <laughs> yeah. It feels so weird because I just. Like a lot of people are probably getting PTSD from what they were <laughs> what they were experiencing. I remember seeing this deck. I've I watched a DB game on rank. Some guy threw four hand traps <laughs> four. At, at the rock player, and he's like, he's like, oh, block dragon, blah, 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 blah. all right, full combo. <laughs> like it's just crazy. He got Valored, Ash, Gamut, Impermed, and he's still full combo. <laughs> he was against like a, a an Alistair hand trap deck. And I was like, Yo, wow. What? I was like, oh well, uh, that's great, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's like, and that in itself. So prior to the ban list, yeah, the state of Yu-Gi-Oh was was really bad because right. everyone was playing the one card needle synchro package. Yeah, and then on top of that, like you add that to something like Eldlick, mm -hmm. and then with the addition of Goons, right? Imagine was, if we didn't have a ban list. <laughs> it would just be so crazy because the thing is, um, with regards to the state of Yu-Gi-Oh, especially from like when you think through the lens of like competitiveness and deck building right yeah every deck now i um, like prior to the ban list yeah. felt like they needed so many hand traps for their deck to be viable what i mean by that is that the you need hand traps to stop the fiber combo it was yeah. literally if fiber resolved you lost the game that's how bad the format was and you know it for decks to you know put in 15 hand traps or just basically lose is kind of like upsetting right yeah and at the same time you have to at the same time, speaking of 15 hand traps, you're, you're playing a deck that can fit those hand traps mm -hmm. while at the same time minimizing, um, well, I mean, while having a lot of one card starters. Like, yeah. if you didn't have a one card starter and you played 15 hand traps, yeah. you're, you're not doing anything. Right, 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 right. And I guess the when we look at um, Yu-Gi-Oh! and what it's become now, uh, the balance did help fix a lot of things. Yeah. Um, but do you think it fixed enough? Like, do you think that the meta has been quote-unquote like better like do you think it's less degenerate now no i don't think so because there, there there's always some obscure card yeah that's like 12 years old yeah that like someone will search because like you, you in the in the Yu-Gi-Oh database you can search by card description yeah so if you just type in like a sentence from mm -hmm. the card that was banned yeah and then put it into the the database it'll show you a bunch of new cards yeah so if you guys <laughs> haven't gone out and bought plague spreader yet Go buy plague spreaders. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, y'all. I, yeah, I was I was abusing that card, man. Like, as I read the card, I'm like, wait, it's not once per turn. You just have to put it back in the grave and you keep doing it. I'm like, oh, it also puts back the bricks you yep. draw. Oh yep. man, that sounds crazy. And and that's that's a thing, right? Like a lot when you saw Jet and O line being banned. Yeah. Um, it didn't really solve a lot of issues because Hulky Fibrax is still alive, right? Like those, like they weren't. Like those two cards, like Jet and Online, were really good cards. Really good cards to summon off of, you know, of Fiber. Jabber, yeah. But 
you know, there's still other tuners in the That's game that are saying, really, yeah. really powerful. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, there's yeah. Vion Cube, Violon Sphere, like Plague Spreader, as we, we uh, mentioned. And there's so many Godforsaken tuners in the game that like yep. the, the possibilities are limitless as long as you do your due diligence and just search yeah that's what i'm saying like and the thing is like there are other tuners out there that will lock you into certain some things yeah but if the strategy is good and needle fiber makes it consistent and the only reason it was rogue is because it was an inconsistent strategy but now with the addition of a tuner that will yeah. lock you into whatever that deck was makes it more consistent all right it becomes a meta deck yeah like, it's right. plain and simple yep yep no 100 percent. and i think like that's what that's what like the the crazy thing about Yu-Gi-Oh and the banlist is that like a I feel like there's never a perfect banlist. At least when I've started playing the game, I feel like there was never a perfect banlist where I'm never, like, wow, man. this banlist was amazing, man. I'm so excited to play in the game. Cause I felt like a lot of people were like getting bored of the same thing over and over. And that's why they were like a lot of people were requesting for the banlist to drop. And when it finally did, it's like, oh man, it's so fresh. Oh wait, Dragon Link didn't get touched. <laughs> it's just like I mean, okay. <clears throat> to be fair, Dragon Link loses. Yeah. It, like they hard lose mm -hmm. to spell cards. Like, what do you mean? Like, like, what are they? Like, how are they stopping Dark Ruler? Oh, yeah. No, true. Or Mystic Mind. No, they figured it out. They how? put Smoke Grenade in the deck. And it's searchable. How? When you go... <laughs> it's, man, people are always doing our crazy combo. But what they're what people are doing now is they put Smoke Grenade in the deck. And uh, they use Rocket Tracer to pop it. Yeah. And then trigger Smoke. And then Summon Tracer to make Savage. A and the way they get it, it's really consistent. To search the Smoke Grenade, there's a card called Vylon uh, Cube. And it's a card that you can summon off of Fiber. And what, what Violent Cube says is, when it's sent to the graveyard for the synchro summon of a light monster, which is Her Herald, Herald. <laughs> you go you go Romulus. Romulus makes Link Cross for two tokens. You then make Fiber. Um, fiber summons the cube. The three plus the one gets you Herald. Herald, <laughs> Herald gets you smoke. Yeah. <laughs> Full combo under Herald. I mean, like, these are the things that like, Yu-Gi-Oh players are doing. <laughs> so, they're, for their full end board is they smoke grenade you. Uh, they uh, they lock you. Buster lock Buster you. Buster lock. Savage. They Savage Herald. Apple. Sa no, just Savage Herald and then Heretic Seal. No, no. I've seen I've seen a Dragon Link end board with Apple, Savage Herald, and Goons. Oh, yeah. Some people are doing that, too. But I think the best end board in today's Dragon Link deck is definitely smoke grenade. Because that card says, I see your old hand. Heretic Seal, which is like so unfair. It is. Um, uh, Savage with a Buster Lock, so you can't even use your Extract to out my cards. And then Herald. Like, that just sounds crazy. Like, if you try to go Battle Phase, Heretic Seal bounce. So it's just nuts. So clearly the state of Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> is, still, is still shite. Yeah, it's still unfortunate. And th that's the, the thing, right? Like I was saying. like, But it did add some new cards to the potential metagame, right? Like, you now can see BAs. Kind of like got a well, huge buff. Uh, well, I mean, here's the thing. BA PK Fire has always been a deck, though. Yeah, true. And the reason it's not a deck anymore is because Tour Guide went to one. Yeah. And Steer Graph went to one. Yeah. But now that Tour Guide's at three, Steer's at two, Graph is, Graph is at two. Yeah. Like, and those are old cards, right? So, yeah. like, like some of those are not once per turn. And and, and that's the problem. Yeah. And then PK, they're getting um uh, tiers and scales. Mm -hmm. Those are rank three. Yeah. Phantom Knight cards. Yeah, they're all coming in Phantom, um, Rage. Phantom Rage. Yeah, so that's going to be a really cool set that I think is going to add more flavor into Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. Because, you know, what the balance did for, the I guess, the state of Yu-Gi-Oh was it turned it from stale to um, something fresh. Like, people are testing out new strategies. They're testing out new cards. Uh, Gishi, you know, Kraken <laughs> went from, I think, either one or banned to three. It I was think, banned to three. I, yeah, it was banned to three. <laughs> And do you know why it was banned originally? Oh, hand loop for five. It bro. was hand loop for five. Yeah. So why did they bring it back? It, it, hand loop still exists in droves. Yeah. Perfect example here. Why did they bring that card back? Yeah, guys, like, I'm working. On, I'm working on a combo for it right now. Oh man, that sounds crazy. Man. No, I don't understand because yes. the reason they did that was because uh -huh. of dry dry tons. The the new oh, ritual. The, the deck. Dratons, yeah. The new ritual deck, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's just like okay, so now you have. You, you can play that Gishiki card yeah. in any ritual deck once, yeah. once you get dry Dryton. Because mm. Dryton is a is a generic ritual Oh really? Uh ritual enabling archetype. That sounds crazy. So it's just like Yeah, and no no, Kraken's crazy because it's not it's not once per turn. It's not once per turn, bro. <laughs> and it literally says, look at two random cards in your opponent's hand, shuffle it into the deck. Like it's like <laughs> it's like what? 
<laughs> it doesn't even discard, so you can get effects like uh, hitting a Shadal. It literally looks at two random cards. Put it back in your deck, bro. Not once per turn. That just sounds crazy. I mean, like, that just sounds like it needs to be abused. Hey, don't worry, guys. <laughs> wow. There's a difference between, like, a competitive <laughs> player and a casual one. He's like, y'all got abused. Yeah. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> no, nah, because nah, you got to <laughs> think, bro, like, Yo, Konami print the card this way, man. It's it's born this way, right? I, no, I, I, all, dude. We gotta figure out how to like make it crazy. Okay, so you know what? Here's a good question. Do you know why they did? You know why Yu-Gi-Oh has a ban list and not a rotation? Okay, why? It's because I guarantee you, mm -hmm. the when like Konami are full of people like you, bro. Yo, <laughs> chill, bro. Like, yo, what can I unban yo. to make my my strategy? Just a little bit more powerful, yo, bro. <laughs> yo, 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 I'm not, I'm not the Zeef, man. I'm not, I'm not in their banless R and D section. Yeah, so is Farfa, bro. Tour guy to three. Tour guy to three. To no, two, yo, what's crazy two. was Farfa actually bought three ultimate rare tour guy pre banless. Yeah. And man, is he sitting on stonks? They're Holy. 300 a piece right now for Astro Pack ultimate rares, man. Yeah, and those were about a hundred. Like one fifty. One, one, yeah, one hundred yeah, to one fifty. Yeah. Now they're three hundred a pop, bro. Hey, yo, good luck getting your hands on playing Max already uh, BAs now. <sighs> yeah, no, when when Tour Guide was at one, I think the ulti Tour Guide first or it was at two. two. It was at two last format, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. when it was at one. Oh, it was at one. Yeah. Yeah, those were eighty five dollars. Oh my god, I could have yeah. been rich. <laughs> <Yeah>. <sighs> but I mean, who would have guessed that? Unless you're uh, Farfa. <laughs> oh, yeah. Unless you work for Konami. Uh, yeah, true. Yeah, my dad works for Konami, bro. <laughs> Be careful, bro. Man. <laughs> no, but no, it's crazy. Because like Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, like, I don't know. I, to be quite frank with you, I don't think the ban list did anything. Yeah. Except just inject a little bit more power to another deck that Konami thought could stand a chance. Right. Because, I mean... You, as an Infernoble player, yeah. and as like a pioneer for a lot of these mm -hmm. new Infernoble strategies, yeah. the first thing you did, I bet you, even way before the ban list, was like, how do I play yeah. without the O-line or Jet? Yeah, so you yeah. you play Jet. Uh, I do. I used to. No, is, I did. Is it 1-1? One, one? I, I played one Jet, one O-line before, yeah. Okay. And it was because like, those two cards let you play through so many hand traps right. because it was like so like... Like, you a Soul Day, and then once you get a Fiber, you just bait out so much with a Soul Day. And then right. once you get a Fiber, you full combo. And it was like... And that was why Jet and O-Line was so good, but it was because it made your deck more resilient to hand traps. Hand traps yeah. Um, but, but the thing was, like, it was, like I like I mentioned before, it was Fiber that was the issue. <laughs> like, basically, it is, it is, like yeah. getting getting the beer root was never a problem <laughs> because afterwards, <laughs> any tuner extender gets you Fiber, fiber right? Yep. So, and, and that's like what's like the first thing I thought to my head was like, okay, if they ban Jet and O-Line, I'm still making Fiber, just. Yeah. What the heck am I summoning this time? <laughs> I mean, like, really, like, realistically, it's not like even that five head. It's literally just like I've always been summoning tuners. It just happened to be jet. If I'm not summoning jet, what am I summoning? Summoning exactly. And, and so that's why, like, you start to look into like tuners. You look into the database. Like, oh, this is a good card to summon. This is a good card to summon. And then you just revamp your combo that way, right? <laughs> and, and I think that's what's like really cool about like post balance is like trying to figure out like you know. Can I still play my deck now, even though cards in my strategy gets banned? Correct, and it, and it's like, I mean, with Infernobles, like it's technically a still a one card combo, even without yeah. O line the jet. Yeah. But you would much rather prefer having two pieces in the hand. Two what? Just two pieces, period. Like, cause like, so yeah. you, you start your combo mm -hmm. off with connector, yep. spation, mm -hmm. Azolde. Yeah, yeah, like that, like so it could be basically. Any two cards it gets a soul day, or yeah. even one card you get soul day. Like the the thing is that um, for people who like watching the videos, they they prefer to see the one card combo because it's like the most it's the easiest way to combo. But then you start to realize that <clears throat> there's so many paths to like getting to the same end board. Yeah, it's just that you just gotta improvise. And for me, like why Yu-Gi-Oh or I believe the save Yu-Gi-Oh is fun for me because there's a deck in the meta game for that for me, which is Infernoble, that lets me basically use my head as i make plays and i get to like evolve my plays around like hands i draw and i just i just love that feeling be able to like it's like almost a game of chess with yourself and then your opponent gets interactive when they have hand traps yeah and and again and i think you hit the nail right on the head for me the reason i enjoy the game is mm -hmm. is because it rewards you for being smart yeah right, right like it right. rewards mm -hmm. you for understanding like your own deck because yeah. 
Right. If you know your deck inside and out, right. like, you know what pieces you're missing. Yeah, exactly. And we have just objectively speaking 10,000 cards that we can mm -hmm. try yeah. to see if we can get to the <clears> same end because like yeah like even though like you are one of the better infernal players mm -hmm. i'm sure if you saw like a combo and you've never seen it before yeah you're like damn yeah, yeah i've yeah. never thought about that right right, right. You know yeah and the thing is like i've been getting a lot of messages from like everyone like hey like i'm trying out this combo i'm trying this this and this and like um i always take a chance to like look at those because uh, people are always thinking about new ideas at the same time, there's also like, you know, ideas that aren't as good. And I try to like look at those two to see what are the flaws in them. Because these this is what people are like thinking or what they think is good and what they're playing. And so, um, and that's why I always say that like, uh, regardless of what deck you play, you should like know how other decks function. Yeah. Because that's how you beat them, right? Like once, it's like uh, what Sun Tzu said, right? Know yourself, know your enemy kind of like thing. <laughs> or maybe know your enemy, know yourself. Some version of that. But the idea is that if you know your deck really well and you know your opponent's deck really well, the only thing you're basically losing to is not it's it's basically the hands that you were dealt. Right. And, and right. then when when you ba basically boil down to that point, I feel a lot better losing to that than losing because like I didn't play properly or didn't know what the opponent's deck did. True. Yeah, yeah and and that's also another thing when it comes to the state of Yu-Gi-Oh. It's really funny cuz like choke points are something that you need to know in mm -hmm. the game. And yeah. because every deck is so similar, yeah. the choke points are all the same. Yeah. It's like, okay, so technically you need to open two hand traps. Yeah. Minimum. Yeah. You know, stop the needle and yeah. stop the fiber and stop whatever, whatever. In archetype searcher they have. Yeah, yeah. Searcher slash summon they have. Yeah, whatever extender they might have. Yeah. yeah. And at that point, you, you just pray that they don't have another extender in their hand. But yep. in 2020, like the entire deck is extenders. Yeah. <laughs> And like it's the freest summons from hand from deck. Like it's actually insane. Yeah. The state of Yu-Gi-Oh in right now. I mean, what do you think? Do you think like we should revert back to like a 2010 type of vibe? 20 set 20 like 2004. I mean, like go format. No. I, okay. I, I would have to hard pass on that because the game is alive because it's it has evolved. Yeah. Right. It's not like and it's not like just because we're playing um, competitive modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. It doesn't mean goat doesn't exist yeah but if we revert back to goat mm -hmm. then there's no reason for anyone to be playing competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. period right so right. you lose the competitive aspect yeah of Yu -Gi oh yeah because the reason why i bring it up is because a lot of players like say that goat format is one of the most skillful formats in Yu-Gi-Oh. because it's um it's not really like you have a lot of turns to like win etc like and there's a there's like you pass so much back and forth that there's interaction and interaction means that people can you know make the wrong play or make the right play and that allows them to come back from like the craziest situations um but i feel like go for is probably one of the sackiest formats i mean yeah but at the same time i people always argue oh you could play you could have played around like you know feather duster <laughs> i'm like okay how <laughs> how they're, they're like set one card bro <laughs> They're like you set you set one you play around the heavy you set one you set one uh, you play around BLS by like or snatch seal by booking your own monster so they can't snatch seal it. Well, yeah, well, I mean, I mean that that's we have that in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, like we were playing uh, sub terror. I was playing sub terror. Sub yeah, yeah. And he was playing Infernobles. Yeah. He 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 equipped the Rendal to my archer. Yeah. So I I uh, used final battle to, to flip my archer down. Put, put my archer down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. His yeah, archer. He down. was like, damn, bro. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> I didn't I didn't expect that to be honest. But um. We're trying to say, bro. <laughs> we're trying I just, to say, I just bro. didn't see that play, man. Um. <laughs> But no, it's, it's honestly like, I feel like, I, I just can't imagine like what five years from now, what Yu-Gi-Oh would be like. It's easy, bro. <laughs> it's easy. So I just can't imagine like, like every cars are like getting power crept by the set, <laughs> like literally by the Yu-Gi-Oh sets. Like I can't even imagine what Genesis impact is going to do for us, which is like December pre-2022. Majestus. Yeah. Yo, you know what? That's actually crazy. Cause like right. you mentioned power crept. We right. have Dragoons, bro. <laughs> Dragoons is a custom card. Some kid was like, yo, you know what card be really broken? Yeah, no. You, you can't target it. You can't destroy it. <laughs> yep. And it pops two and burns you for right. for everything. And Omni the Gate, bro. You yeah, it's, like, the Omni the it's definitely like a, a fan fiction created card. <laughs> and <laughs> someone just didn't think too hard about it when they were making the card. Like, and, How did that go past, like, you know, I, people? I had, I had no idea. And, and what's crazy is that, like, that, that's a card that if you had that in, like, 2010 i think i think it was just unbeatable yeah, you can't out it <laughs> there's no out yeah because the dragoon can't out the dragoon yeah dragoon can't have been out dragoons 
<laughs> and what's even crazier is that like I don't even think kaijus were out back then. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Monarch Stormforth, I guess. Oh my gosh, man! But it, it's just so crazy because um, there's gonna be so much power crap, so much power crap. But when we look at other games like Magic, right? You had like the Power Nine, and there's like oh. all, all the cards that come after it are like like worse versions of that. Of it, yeah. But yeah. in Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> Cards over time are like better versions of the old, old cards. cards. Exactly. <laughs> Yo, Dark Magician is now Dragoons. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's funny because like, you know, you know, like it, our, in Yu-Gi-Oh! lingo, yeah. we look at a card like Hospitality, right? We're yeah. like, oh, it's a Foolish Burial. Yeah, Foolish Burial. It's literally just a, it's literally a better Foolish Burial. Yeah. It, it summons and dumb. So it it's summons like, and Foolish, yeah. So it's like, yo, wh what's next, bro? Summon, pop, dump? You know, yeah. like what, <laughs> yeah. what's next? Yeah, I mean, I mean, some people could like argue like, oh, well, Pot of Greed technically got, you know, powered down and like the worst firms of that are like extra yeah. desires, etc. But then it's like, Desires is like low key, like really good in a lot of strategies. I remember, um, like that Banished 10 is actually like really strong. Extravagance is actually pot of greed for certain decks because, like, they, they don't actually use their don't deck, use their extra deck. <laughs> um, and it, and like pot of duality obviously doesn't draw you too, but being able to like see three cards on the top of your deck yep, is like yep. really strong. And and it's like they may not be the same card, but their utility is like really, really powerful, right? Correct. And, and, and I mean, it, th they just put in three tax for Christ's sake. Three tax. Yeah, and like, it's just like, bro, like you have to understand how Yu-Gi-Oh players think, right? They're yeah. like, they they have a favorite deck, yeah. And then they're like, how do I break this deck, bro? Right, like, right. I, like that's why we still have Dark Magician players, we still have yeah. Blue Eyes players, right, bro. Right, right. Like those decks. Don't don't dislike the video for this. Yeah, they're really bad, bro. Like yeah. there's nothing you can do to it <laughs> yeah. to make them good. Yeah, strictly due to the fact that you have like you're playing three dark magicians. Yeah, like that's three slots in your deck that are just gone to vanillas, bro. Yeah, like I don't care if you say they're not bricks because the red eye fusion. Yeah, they are, bro. <laughs> they <laughs> yeah. are. Yeah, no, and and that's the thing, man. It's just that like. I still think that Yu-Gi-Oh! is definitely still fun. I remember, yeah. like, when the bands came out, I was, like, excited because I was, like, this is the start of new things that I will be seeing. Don't get me wrong. I'll, I'm sure in, like, two, three, two, three weeks, maybe a month, I'll get bored again. But, I mean, a set, a, a, a new set is coming out. Yeah. Um, new archetypes are coming out. And so that I think that from September till December, it should still be an exciting time to be playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Because the new archetypes, the new sets... Um, uh, the ban list has just dropped, and then by the time December hits in January, there'll be another ban list. And hopefully yeah, yeah. in 2022, um, events are going to start opening up, Corona gets better. So overall, I think we're in a positive, I feel really positive towards yeah, the game and same, the, same. The, the overall prospect of the future. Um, but it don't even wrong, the past two months prior to this ban list it was, was just... It was rough, man. Was rough, like, man. like playing on DB, I was <laughs> like, I can't, bro, I can't. Like, like, imagine scooping after they go in normal summon research. It's just, like, crazy. Yeah, no, it was definitely, like, an RPS format for sure. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, at the, end of the, at the end of the day, like, when has it not been? You know, like, yeah. uh, you can argue... <sighs> How many formats has it been RPS? Because, like, you had Spiral format, which is RPS, depending. Yeah. Even Zoo, even though it may be, like, not as, like, yeah. degenerate, like, was still RPS dependent. Yeah. You know, like it, like RPS really matters in this game. I think more so than other trading card games. I feel I like, so. right? I think so too. Um, but at the same time, would, would would you? What would you say to that? Like, would you say that like when someone does really well, is it because of RPS, or is it due to like like you know what I mean? I mean that's variance, right? Because yeah. like you can have one tournament where you win every single RPS. Yeah. You know. And, and, and that's the funny thing, because, like, uh, when Pendulums were more popular, mm -hmm. people in their decks didn't even play Hand Traps. Right. Because they were like, my deck literally does nothing going second. Right. So there's no point in me playing going second cards. Yeah, yeah. And at that point, like, you're literally like, die dependent. Saying, like, I'm going to lose, yeah. Yeah, so <clears throat> if, if that's the mentality, then you can't deny the fact that, like, that, it's yeah, RPS it doesn't matter. It know? is, yeah, and... That's yeah, because even like when I'm I'm starting to play more combo decks now, for example, right? Yeah. And like I still have to, I usually try to dedicate six slots to hand traps whenever I deck build now, yeah. just because I'm like, I want at least six out of forty cards in my deck to give me a chance in case I lose RPS, and and it might not be the highest chance, but it's just that 
on the variance that on the account that I do lose my dice roll, that hopefully I see these cards. And if I don't, then I mean I guess I take the the, the loss. But I still want that sort of percentage that even if I go second, um, I open up a hand trap to hopefully interact. But the craziest thing is that even if you do, it's still not a surefire way that they get stopped in their tracks anyways. And are you okay with that though? Because I, mean, I yeah. mean, why in a card game do you have to lose RPS and you're like, damn. Yeah. I'm, I have a 90% chance of losing right. this game. No, and that's the thing. I feel like some of the most broken decks, like for example, like Thunder Dragons, like back in, I guess, Nationals format was like, they can lose RPS and so like, breaks like salmon great boards and just yeah. otk them yeah and that's why like i think some of those decks are just so good because they're they can break boards while and building one. while building one and they're so good at first or second that the die roll didn't matter you only lost in the mirror and <laughs> 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 that's how you know like decks are just like so broken yeah i know and, and it's really funny because there um there was another uh, archetype that recently came out that builds boards but breaks boards at the same time yeah. on your opponent's turn, yeah. which is Plunder Patrols. Plunder Patrols, yeah. Plunder, and, and that deck is really good. And you've yeah. gotten first place in, yeah, yeah. In, in a couple of tournaments with them. Yeah. And I, well, strictly speaking, like Plunder Patrols is a deck that like you have to know where to stop. Yeah. Or you'll lose to it every time. Like that's right. how good the deck is. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And even Dragon Mates and Unchained, let's throw Unchained in there too. Yeah. They play more on, you know, like your opponent's turns. Right. And like a lot of people don't know how to handle that. Yeah. So I think like don't like, like decks like that are fun to play. Yeah, decks like that opinion. are really fun to play. Because yeah. I, I would hate to sit here, mm. lose a dice roll, mm. open no hand traps, watch you go full combo, yeah. even if you don't have to. Yeah. And then just be like, all right, uh, draw. It wasn't Dark Ruler. All right, too bad. <laughs> too bad, yeah. Yo. And that's why like I mean, don't get when I first started playing more competitively. I would say like in January of this this year, um, I I started to gravitate towards control decks because even though I won RPS, it was never like I just entirely won the game. It was always interactive. That's why I always sort of favored the trap decks when I first started playing because I was like, um, when I was playing like Ultra Guys, for example, <laughs> I would go first, right? Play whatever, but then it was always interactive. With my opponents are like I didn't. I always like. Pride myself in having no floodgates in Altergeist. Like I had, oh. I had zero floodgates. Yeah, I didn't oh. play any floodgates. Um, actually, t technically I had IO, but it was a Saki one of, and I never really like, you know, I was like, if I drew it, I drew it, and I drew it for their lightning storm. So they drew the lightning storm, I drew my IO. But most of the time, they have a higher chance to see the lightning storm versus me seeing my IO. Three v one, baby. Yeah, 3v1. so it's it's that same thing. And I I was like, you know, they get to interact, they play through my interruptions right instead of monster in the gates they're just trapped in gates it's just yeah. like a solemn strike versus a i don't know uh i don't know savage or i guess savage doesn't just in gates but it's a, it's the same type of concept and obviously trap decks or our control decks are less consistent when it comes to that because you have, you have to, to draw you have to draw, draw you, you have to draw your nothing, negates bro, yeah. <laughs> can't search nothing, yeah and and then you steamroll off those those cards but um at least they get to interact right yeah so i mean guys it has it's around that time. It's around that time, yeah. And so if you are interested in seeing the second part of this, um, definitely go down in the description box below. It will be the first link to uh, Head to Heads Battles channel. Click it. Uh, we'll they'll have the second part right after this. So it will literally be live right after yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so go check that out. Um, you know, we hope you enjoy this during your either drive to work, um, you know, your your daily walks, etc. Um, yeah. And we hope you're staying safe during these times. And also, um, to give you a little bit of of a incentive to mm -hmm. watch the second episode we're gonna be doing a small giveaway guys right. and also if our videos collectively hit 1000 likes, likes we're gonna be doing a big giveaway a big one yeah big yeah. giveaway yeah. all right and you have five days to do this all right yes. you have five days to give both of these videos 500 likes each for a collective thousand yep. and we'll be doing a huge giveaway oh yeah all right so um, uh, in the next video, we're going to be kind of expanding and elaborating more on the ban list because I know we didn't talk about yeah. a lot of the ban list right, because right, right. Um, we're talking about more about the, the meta state. The meta but state, we're going to yeah. be talking more about you know the rogue versus meta state and the ban list as well. So, right. guys, thank you so much. And again, guys, if you if you guys aren't already subscribed to Pack and you haven't and you haven't subscribed in these amazing 30 minutes, please go do that Let's and uh, give the video a like and comment. Any Any last words? Not much. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.